and welcome back to my channel as you may already know my name is Moch Kamba and as promised on this channel we have a guest okay my second guest is the amazing <laughs> and lovely Dr. Zami who is going to talk to us today about being a dentist in Zimbabwe as you can already tell from the title of the video <laughs> appreciate the face, <laughs> the face. <laughs> i've put in my description box a link <laughs> to the video where doc when she's not fixing people's smiles <laughs> she's fixing their faces <laughs> oh, that sounds so good <laughs> <All right>. <laughs> <laughs> yes she fixed my face she was doing my makeup and we're just having a chit chat so you can head over to her to her channel and also subscribe over there because she talks everything lifestyle everything beauty and everything being Zimbabwean so today thank you doc for agreeing <laughs> to be on my channel thank you for having me I'm going to ask you to just give us a brief introduction of yourself okay my name is dr. Zami if you need that full name is Zamele actually yes Gamalang was Zamele but I'm from Missingeli okay you yep. just did. Oh wow! Nice. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, most people know me as Doctor Za. Um, I am a dentist, obviously. I love my job. If there's anything that everybody knows about me, mm -hmm. is I love my job. It, I, it's just too evident because <laughs> I talk about my job any chance that I get, nice. be on Twitter, Instagram, or wherever, I have to talk about my job, because I love it. Um, yeah, that's me. 29, a young wife. You young. <laughs> <laughs> young wife. We just celebrated our first anniversary. Oh, um, congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, and that's about it. And I love being here on YouTube. It's great to just... We're still here in COVID. Right? I love it. It's, it's like a time to just share and yeah, thank I, you I so really much. Like it. So, I'll also put the links to your social media in mm -hmm. my description box. I am really okay. clueless about dentistry. Tell me, how do I? Okay, what does a dentist do essentially? Uh, how I hate it when people say dentist and a you know? Mm -hmm. That is like the worst thing. It makes me cringe. <laughs> but when we only get to interact with dentists when we want to get our teeth done this almost is yeah think. because people come to the dentist when they're in pain now mm -hmm. i don't blame zimbabweans especially i don't blame you because with our country and how it is mm -hmm. you know dentistry is seen as a luxury yeah so people are going to come when they're in pain mm -hmm. hence the whole oh I, I need to get my tooth taken out that's the only thing that someone is thinking about in that moment yeah, yeah. but we do so much more we even have specialties within dentistry because there's so many fields within dentistry so dentistry if you think about dentistry it's like the whole head and neck region that's it that's okay dentistry. yeah head that is dentistry head and neck region that's what we deal with um so yeah that is dentistry so within the head and neck you've got your teeth <laughs> which is what we also work on most of the time yeah um but there's also oromaculofacial surgery there's listen i don't want to talk about all this deep Medical jargon terms. but <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's a lot yeah, more there's a lot more to dentistry than just teeth so it's not just teeth okay all i got was they don't had a neck and nothing to its teeth so we're right. <laughs> we're right and they fix smiles. Yes, at mm -hmm. least that part I was right. Yes. All right. So now that you've told us what dentists do, how do I become a dentist in Zimbabwe? Okay. So it's quite sad and quite unfortunate that my version of how I became a dentist in Zimbabwe might be different right now because okay. the, yeah, the college is kind of like, changing course they're changing quite a few things around okay. so i think first the of college all, of health sciences 
mm-hmm. of Kali, okay. which they are now calling a Jacobi, I think. Yeah, yeah, I think they are. Yeah, so there are a lot of changes that are happening, which I might not be in tune with, but I can hint on a few changes. Yeah. So I think maybe let me just talk about my journey. Yes, please. Um, so for you to study uh, dentistry, mm-hmm. you must have studied sciences in A level. Okay. So that's either your maths, biology, chemistry, or your maths, physics, and chemistry. Oh, you can actually do it with both. Yeah, the most that's important, the most important subjects there are the math and the chemistry. I hate that actually. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Everybody would think that, but it's actually the math and the chemistry. Oh, nice. So even like when they're looking at your A's, mm-hmm. they want your A's to be mostly math and, and chemistry. chemistry. Okay. Because I mean, biology is easy. I found it very easy. Okay. I loved okay. it. Okay. Uh, and for some other people, mm-hmm. physics is also really easy. Okay. Math and chemistry can be. You gotta put in a bit of work. I think I can so. Attest to math. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. So yeah. So math and chemistry they're the most important, and then you can either do biology, physics, whatever you're really good at. Yeah. All right. Now. Do- do you go to UZ or to whatever university you want to go to to study dentistry? Or do you get there and study with like maybe a, what I thought was like mm-hmm. maybe a general degree and then you specialize? How exactly does the process go? No, you study dentistry straight off. Oh, it's straight off dentistry. Yeah. It's just that um, you are learning together with a medical student. So, but you are learning together, but you are a dental student. Because the basics of the human body, that's it. You cannot run away from it. You study every, we even we study from the toe, right from the toe all the way up. So we learn together first year, second year, third year, fourth year. Then we completely split up in fifth year. Oh, right. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that's how it is. Um, so then let me just hint on what might be different now. Okay. So what might be different now is one, they they were thinking of adding another year. So instead of five years, it might end up being six years. <laughs> I know. I know. But um for dental students, I would say it's actually kind of advantageous because the thing is we are actually under a lot of pressure than people realize. Because we're we're learning together with the medical students and then in third year you're introduced to dentistry lectures so you've got more on top of what you're already learning which is like in third year you're learning pathology then you're also starting your dentistry lectures then in fourth year when we start the clinical that's when you kind of like split up a bit but we still meet up to do clinical pharmacology um but then (laughs) studying medicine guys that's pharmacology okay medicine like like, you know, when you go to the pharmacy, oh, okay. when I write a prescription, oh. I need to know what I'm prescribing. I need to know. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh. So I need to learn all of that. What medicine treats what? Oh, okay. So that's clinical pharmacology. So we learn that together in fourth year. And then, but then the clinical is different. So clinical now, we are starting to do the fillings and we are actually treating patients in fourth year. And then for the medical students, they're also doing that, but they're now doing uh, OBG, which is obstetrics, like pregnant women stories, mm-hmm. uh, and gynecology and pedi- pedi- pediatric medicine for them. But we'll be doing pediatric dentistry. Oh. So that's when it'll be split up. Um, so you'll find that if you go to a dentist and you ask, oh, this contraceptive is not working for me, we'll just be like, girl, go to your gynecologist. Because <laughs> we, we don't study that. Um, yeah, we we just know like the basics of, of how normal should be your reproductive health, right? So we know the basics and we know what can go wrong. So like in the first two years, you're studying what's normal in the human body. Then in third year, you're studying what would go wrong in the human body. Then in fourth year, now you're studying how do you treat what has gone wrong in the human body. Fourth year and fifth year. So that's how you can kind of like break it down. You 
say that when you're hinting on the changes, of course, we don't expect it to have the full 111. I remember mm-hmm. when I called you, said it's at the time mm-hmm. they were saying we're revising our courses and everything. Mm-hmm. But so you're saying the main change is the number of years is increased, number of years, and also how you actually get into uh, dental school. So, like, okay, the change that I'm sure of that was there now because for me, I simply applied. They assessed my application, and then I got in, right? Mm -hmm. Um, But now what they do is you apply, they assess your application, then you're called in for an interview. Mm -hmm. Then you have an interview. So, because now they really want to make sure that you're actually passionate about it. And then in dentistry, they actually give you something to carve out. So they want to see, do you have the general skill? Like, fine motor skill oh yeah because you can't be a dentist if you're not good at that you, so so when is this dentistry interview then done is it done before you start oh mm-hmm. yeah so they just give you something to carve out like a rose a flower or whatever it is they just give you really yeah and then they say carve it up that's interesting <laughs> <laughs> i know um but yeah so that that also really ensures that you're not only taking someone who's just saying, oh, being a dentist is cool, but you're taking someone who's really passionate about it. And if you really want it, you're going to carve it out. Because you feel like, listen. <laughs> I need this. I need I this. I was mad for carving out. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I thought it was really interesting when they started it. They started it when I was, I think I was in final year or fourth year. Okay. That's when they started that. It was really good because... Because some people just don't have fine motor skill. Mm. They're just not good at it. Now, if you're not good at manual, if you don't have really good manual dexterity, a lot of things in dentistry involve that. You're looking at minute things and you're, I mean, that's why I'm good with my hands, you see, I'm good at doing makeup. <laughs> because that's just yeah. how it is. You're, yeah, we you can see. <laughs> she's good with her hands. And you can tell from the diction. The vocabulary that we're talking to and the edges. <laughs> it's not just me. It's not just the more I talk about those things. Okay, so yeah. now that you've gone through the training of becoming a dentist, you know, the mm-hmm. school and you're already practicing, how hard is it? Like, how mm-hmm. hard is the training? I know if somebody asks me about how hard it is to be what I am, I will go to town to say, don't go there if you are not prepared. <laughs> how hard is it? Because, you know, it's college. We see all those people in the College of Health Sciences. Mm-hmm. They one they drink a lot <laughs> and they read a lot. So we always say it's because they are stressed from school. Is this true? How hard is medical school? Medical school is not like the regular school. I I admit. Well, I used to argue and say, but school is school. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. I'm like, hey, well, school is school. Of course, everybody has to work, but. You know, when, when my husband is talking about his undergrad mm-hmm. and how he went through undergrad, then I realized, no, man. <laughs> I, I, mean, <laughs> I mean, he used to be able to do, like, his assignments, like, you know, beforehand, and he would mm-hmm. just do all of them. He could choose to say, ah, some lectures are bang. Yes, you yes, know? You bang them to actually watch movies. Girl, you cannot do that <laughs> You suffer, you would die for six years. Ah, uh, you cannot do that. You cannot bank. If if you bank, you are. Hey, I don't know. Like, okay, if you bank, you're gonna have notes, but it's not the same as when the lecturer is there. And most of the times, the lecturers do hint. They really push you in the direction of what's important because because there's a vast amount of information. Yes. You know what I mean? So, you know, a lecturer really, like, narrows you, like, points you in the right direction, like, this is what is important. And you also have to remember that um, your lecturers teach you w- about what's relevant in your country because disease, common diseases in Zimbabwe might not be common in the UK, right? Exactly. But your textbook is going to talk about international things. Your lecturer is going to make you zone in on what's oh, important. Oh, what's important. Right. Mm-hmm. Of course, you're going to learn what's also out there, but they really like zone in on, you know, I mean, we really deal with HIV and AIDS. So we're going to zone in on that and make sure that you know, so that when you see a patient, you're not going to miss anything. So, yeah. So I, for us, I can say, I think what I would say 
say is it's different. I won't want to say like it's tough, like it's not doable or what, but it's different. You really have to be focused. But you also need to play hard because if you don't play so that's why you say they drink they, a lot. They do. You need to play do. hard because if you don't relax, you will lose your mind. <laughs> I am telling not you for six years. You will lose your mind. I could go to the hardest parts in my career because I knew it's the next two years, uh-huh. the next three years, yeah. But six years <laughs> so after after the degree, do you then do another qualification or is? Um, oh, just to note on that whole six years, it might actually become even more than six years because there was a discussion of doing like a pre med before people then go to medical school. I thought it's, I think it's the one that they call biomedical science. Exactly, exactly. Which would then make it even three better. years. It's three years. And then, then you, you go- start. So, whew, I don't know. <laughs> Because we had plans of marrying them. <laughs> I mean, I mean, <laughs> yeah, those plans might change. Yeah, I think yeah. probably the trend will now become like people are getting married within medical within school. Within medical school. Much more because yes, you can't wait that long, guys. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. So, so after going through all this, through the biomedical, whatever, it's, and mm. through the drinking hard, <laughs> working hard. <laughs> Is it worth that in the end, in terms of the money? Because mm-hmm. some of us, mm-hmm. I, I'm not talking the rich people who go into their passions for the passion. Mm-hmm. I'm also thinking of people who are going into school because they want to make a livelihood for themselves. They want to create a better life for themselves. Mm-hmm. Is studying medicine worth that? Or is for those who get that option uh, in terms of the money? I'll tell you this, if you go into the medical fraternity anyway, like any field mm-hmm. within the medical fraternity, if you join it for the money, mm-hmm. solely for the money, you will be very depressed. It's a very lie to us. No, it's not like you don't make money. Don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. You can you can make quite a bit of money. Mm-hmm. But if that is all you are thinking of, you will feel like it's not worth it. Because if you're not if you're not actually passionate about helping people, mm-hmm. about treating people, if that is not within you and your sole purpose is to make money, I will be miserable. I can tell you that because so the long and short is <laughs> you gotta love it. The money you'll be a skilled laborer. <laughs> There is no money. <laughs> it will come I later. What about the option mm-hmm. of surgeries? Because I was discussing this money discussion with someone. Mm-hmm. Because for me, I'm really passionate about money. Mm-hmm. I, really, I, 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 I like I like having money. I like my wallet having money. I like buying things that I want. So I'm really passionate about money. Yeah. So I was having this discussion with somebody about medicine and money. Mm-hmm. And this person was saying, ah, these people in the surgeries are making a lot of money. Now tell us, is that a viable option for everyone? Because you know how everybody's like, hey, you can be an entrepreneur, but not, we all know not everybody is an entrepreneur. Yeah, yeah. So is opening a viable option, opening a surgery a viable option for everyone? Or it's not really something that we, we have to consider when we're talking about returns for medicine? No, you can make money anyway. Mm-hmm. Okay, so let me make that clear. Mm-hmm. You can make money anyway whichever career path that you can choose so let me stick to my field right Mm -hmm. um so for me when you when you finish your internship because you do internship with the government for one year Mm -hmm. then after the one year you can choose wherever you want to go okay whatever you want to do so it's either you go into private practice Mm -hmm. right uh so the way that you can go into private practice Soon after the one year, you can't open your own surgery, but you can work at someone's surgery doing what we call locums, right? Mm -hmm. So you are paid uh, a certain percentage of whatever the patient pays. Oh. Mm -hmm. So that so that's locum, right? And then um, after after uh, the internship and one year of working as a locum, you can now open your own practice. Okay, so you can choose to open your own practice. Um, so that's private practice. Then we have another form of it's like private practice, but it's what we call corporate. So now you are 
working for a corporate so you know how the medical aides now have their own hospitals so that's corporate as well so you, you can work for CMAS, you can work for PSMI, mine uh, you can work for any corporate that has their own uh, in-house yeah dentistry so then with those ones you're usually paid a salary like a fixed salary right and then the third option is you can go into government right i love the one that i always and try for you <laughs> <laughs> yeah um so funny enough i actually chose government um okay. for me i chose government because i really wanted the experience i wanted to be out there in the machono news mm -hmm. alone to grow confidence to know that i can handle any complication i can handle it on my own and i really got to grow in that way and i worked for two years and i really love public health so i was working with people there kumanisha and teaching and what 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 but obviously money wise you know it's, it's not that great <laughs> it's not that great but then when you come into private practice as well when you're doing low comes now like i said you're getting a percentage of whatever that patient pays so it's highly dependent on how many patients you see what procedures you're doing and then that will determine how much you get then corporate as well corporate depends on which on the company, on the company. who are you working for how much are they going to pay you so it's going to be different for everybody it all depends on what you want what what are you really focused on so yeah so for me i'm the worst person to talk about money with when it comes to dentistry <laughs> Yeah, but, but well, yours, um, because of your own values, and because this is like, okay, clearly see that this is your passion, yeah. you know, that you love, yeah. and you're already just the money. <laughs> but I will come back to this now, all the money. Yes. Uh, in as much as we have passions, we have bills yes. to pay. So we need to, would you be able to give us a range to say, if you're working in dentistry, straight from college, Mm -hmm. Because we don't want to talk about after college because you know what after college even like as accountants mm -hmm. four or five years after college you're not the same everybody's career takes a different trajectory and it now depends on who you know mm -hmm. what you do how you perform mm -hmm. so we don't want to talk about like you like four or five years after finishing mm -hmm. no we want to talk straight out of college straight, or straight out, out of house what do you call it the one here. yes straight out of that how much would I make probably as a dentist in government now in government in well actually the salary is almost the same as during internship actually so it should be around seven eight thousand bond right per month per month and then we add on um, other allowances. maybe allowances and stuff and stuff and stuff right uh that's the last i heard at today's rate that's less than 100 that's a less, less than a hundred. What about in 2016? You know how much I made in 2016? In 2016, I was a dentist in 2016. I was an intern in 2016. So, how much did I earn? 800? No, that's USD. different. So, no, please don't consider the less than 100 USD. It's, it's Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe is <laughs> in the chance. It's in the chance for motive things. So, for today, we're going to work with you getting 800 straight out of the internship and then you determine for yourself whether you want to go to the surgery or you want to go i would other. say yeah if, well i would say if you are if you are money oriented then definitely go into private practice um uh if you and then in private practice there are two options if you are if you are more comfortable with a stable income then go into corporate oh yeah if you're if you are okay with winning it and saying you know what i'm gonna work as hard as i can to get as many patients and do as many procedures then you go for the locum and with locum in as much as it would seem like you might make more money sometimes you might not make as much as you would so if the clients don't come if the clients don't come or if you work for a not so nice boss who just gives you the very cheap procedures then you get really little and yet you're working very hard oh. so you need to then and also that's another thing um uh don't live a life that's too focused on just i want to make money 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 i think 
focus on advancing yourself because when you advance yourself and advance your skills then you can do the more complicated procedures that require more money from the patient and then you start earning more so with dentistry it takes time oh then yes uh opening your own practice you it's a lot of money <laughs> dentistry takes a lot uh, the equipment is very expensive the consumables are very expensive you're going to have staff to think about you're going to have taxes to think about. you tell me about that yeah, you, <laughs> you've got taxes to think about you've got so much to think about so many expenses i haven't opened my own practice but one thing i can definitely tell you is it takes a lot of money um and most people who have opened surgeries usually get loans most people usually get loans and uh, then you have to work really hard to to pay it to, to, to pay it off yeah so but it's but it's doable so you're saying that in as much as people like to throw around opening your own surgery it's not realistic in the first few years of your career well, I wouldn't say realistic because every everybody's path is very different. Yeah, yeah. Some some people have managed to do that actually. Some people have managed to open their own surgeries like soon after internship. But you have to be exceptional. <laughs> very exceptional. Here we're well, talking about people, the average dentist. Well, girl. the average dentist, the average dentist. Uh, I, I think what I've noticed because I've had a meeting with uh, one certain bank before, mm -hmm. and. Um, what they needed was a track record of myself, where I've worked before, and how like turnover of patients that I that I've seen. So they would need that as well. And so definitely need time for you to get. Yeah. Checked. So then you'd need time. So probably maybe a year or two after internship, then you can approach the bank and then you just give them your track record and everything. And probably it would be nice. It would be good for you to have a guarantor as well. I think. Uh, Very shanty. And your rich aunties, <laughs> exactly. Just approach your rich aunties and be like, Can you be my grandpa? I just need to get a loan and open up my own surgery. And right. then so. uh, this brings me to the last, last question that I have. You're going to choose to ever tell us the one fun part about mm -hmm. being a dentist. The one thing that you look forward to, like, as a dentist, yeah, this part is really <laughs> nice. Or you're going to tell us the one thing that you wish you had known before you chose on that application letter to say, I want to be a dentist. <laughs> so one of the two. One fun part or what you wish you had known. I'm hoping you tell us the fun part. <laughs> <laughs> Obvious. I will, I will obviously talk about the fun part. Yes. Um, for me. Okay, so what I love about dentistry is the smile on a patient's face. Like, I just... I absolutely love it um, because for me like when a patient comes in like they come in in pain mm -hmm. and like for me my work is kind of instant like they come in with pain and then the pain is gone yeah. as, soon, <laughs> as soon as I'm done with them that pain is gone mm -hmm. and for me that is like the most satisfying thing or even when they come in and they don't like how their teeth look that's my favorite part mm -hmm. cosmetic dentistry aesthetic dentistry and you fix that smile and you give them a mirror and they just have this smile like this is exactly why i love doing makeup on people because it's the same thing like you do a face beat and someone looks at themselves in the mm -hmm. mirror and they just smile it's it is everything for me everything and i think that's why i'm always saying like i fix smiles that's what i do and i just love it so yeah and so that's the thing so like when i do a treatment like even if it's not like on the same day mm -hmm. when a patient then comes like the next day like let's say i was doing a root canal treatment mm -hmm. um then the patient comes on the second session you to go to, a, to <laughs> channel to the channel <laughs> yes is. do come to my channel then you know what a root canal is mm -hmm. so i usually do it in, in two sessions so when they come for the second session you know like because the first session they're not sure they're like is it the anesthetic like what is it that's taking the pain away so when they come the second time and they're like so happy and then they just say oh my goodness i slept well that tooth did not give me problems for me that's it's so satisfying so satisfying i just love it i think that's the best part for me thank you so much dr zara so for for me you also see that feeling in the video that we did when she gave me the mirror and i was looking at my first face so please if you like lifestyle like beauty and if you
you like dog design like you're really as a person please do subscribe to her channel i'll put the link in the description box and if you have any further questions you can reach out to me on my instagram on my facebook on my social media and then i can always bring her back but for now <laughs> thank you for staying with us and thank you for watching our video see you in the next video and until next time ciao ciao bye, bye. <laughs>